Riders ready, watch the gate. <laughs> this is gonna be a good one hey welcome back to the dirty knobs podcast this is a special one that we just threw together sort of a grand's recap due to the incident we'll call it that for now we'll probably come up with a better name for it but due to the incident we'll uh we, we're gonna throw this one together so we can get out this sunday and let our friends uh ponder the thoughts that we have and you know, i'm sure you'll come up with your own opinion but looking forward to hearing it Hey, time for the show. Yo, Yo what's up? Hey, hey, a special one. Oh, Velocity. Uh, oh, look at, that. Look at oh, you. Look, the, look at the work Custom. shirts, boys. Damn. Custom. Like legit. Dude, there you go, man. Let's see your shoes. <laughs> yeah, he's got his race, race his, his race boots. His race boots. boots. <laughs> I'm working my race shoes, man. I'm working my race shoes. Oh man! Hey, so I just, like the shirts. Yeah. J JV, why don't you introduce our special guest? <laughs> our special. I mean, we're, we're everyone here. knows probably our special guest. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Uh, <laughs> he's. Not just a special guy. I mean, he's part of the, uh, essentially part of the crew. Oh yeah, our our uh, production I mean, manager. That's right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the man behind the scenes. Yes, my man, Justin Shepard. Well, there was uh, the, every... we, we got this together. Real... There you go. You see? Oh, Have what that... are you eating? That looks good. Pizza. Say something. Pizza. No, Show us that I, pizza. I got some pizza. Pizza right here, bro. Just a. A little bit of pizza, pizza. You know what? Five minutes late starts with food. <laughs> Some things never Daddy, change. Yeah, Some things never change. Eat, it's eat. about keeping a consistent format is what it is. Yeah. Don't want to Speak disappoint our fan base. Speaking of being consistent. Tell me. Well, what's our topic? Yeah. Well, <laughs> so we are ju we are jumping in. Uh, this is kind of a special one in that something happened over the last weekend, and we're jumping in real quick to talk about it because we've it's quite been a I'd say it's a firestorm, if you will. And uh, the reason we really wanted to have Justin on here is because oh. Justin Shepard, our boy, was uh, was really the, the first person I saw post about the, the incident. And uh, for now, we'll call it the incident. If somebody has a better name for it, throw it out there. Justin's got a new nickname. Oh shit! The potster. <laughs> Justin's the ar he's, he's the arsonist. He's the arsonist. He's yeah. the arsonist. <laughs> yes, threw a huge match on that pile of gas-soaked wood. Man, <laughs> holy oh, smokes! It's been soaking a long time, man. So, Justin, since you're the resident expert, why don't you tell us what you saw, what happened, and and why you started this whole shitstorm? Well, <laughs> um, I, I I watch I was watching the uh, Grands and watched the last race of the weekend, and uh, you know it looked like a pretty clean race. You know, Charlie Williams he got a little squirrely, and unfortunately. Uh, when he got squirrely, a couple guys crashed, and one of them got hurt pretty badly. Um, but then that, after the finish line, I didn't know who it was at first, but this guy comes flying across the finish line, elbow first into Charlie Williams' back. And I was like, what What the hell just happened? And uh, I watched the race again, and I figured out it was, it was uh, Harry Leary. And uh, I was like, man, that's a super cheap shot. And it reminded me of something that happened to me a long time ago. And But I ended up with a broken collarbone. And uh, it just, it like struck a nerve. And then I, I felt like, you know, if anybody 
knows better. It's 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 somebody that's in the Hall of Fame. That's you know kind of legendary, really. Not kinda. Um, he is then, a legend. You know, yeah, yeah, I can't I, I can't I, take I, that away. He is a legend in BMX. Yeah, yeah, and and I, I I the more I thought about it, the more I remembered that it's it's kind of um it's kind of his mo really you know he, it's not the first time he's done that kind of stuff so you know and a lot, those of us that are i don't want to i guess we're sort of insiders maybe i don't know we, we we've been around the sport for a long time and we remember him back in in the 70s and 80s and he wasn't a choir boy that's for sure um but uh, you know a lot of a lot of people consider him their hero but they don't really know the real guy. And I think the four of us probably know the real guy more than most people. So probably more than the average person or yeah. the average modern day racer. Yeah. You know, there were a lot of people surprised um, when they started hearing about his sort of uh, character. You know what I mean? So. I I, I did. I, did you yeah. happen to? Well, speaking of things in the past, did you happen to see the uh, post that Mike Rodriguez from Crit Plate put? I found very interesting. The race from 1988, when Harry does the exact same thing and makes Chris Mulder crash yeah. after the finish line, mm -hmm. and you can hear the crowd boo. So it's just a complete reenactment of what he did this weekend. Yeah. You know, like I, I feel like if if he had come up to Charlie and and said hey look face to face and started yelling at him or whatever that's completely different but but coming up behind him and then you know elbowing him in the back and then just taking off that's kind of a chicken shit thing to do in, in my book I well, wanted to say sorry go ahead Mike. no well there was one other thing I wanted to make sure that we talked to you know that got covered in the whole thing not only did Charlie got, you know, Charlie got rammed, but he wasn't the only person in the incident. Yeah, there yeah. was a girl that was giving the, giving the place ticket card away. Well, there's another she kid that hit. jumped out of the way at the last minute. Mm. Oh, there's the little girl right there. <laughs> Mr. Williams, Mr. Williams, I've got your trophy ticket. <laughs> <laughs> that girl went flying, man. We got props. We got props, we got props for this one. Yeah. Pops. it's my santa suit <laughs> it's my santa suit yeah uh anyway i'm sorry what were we gonna say jv before my silliness <laughs> i was gonna say you know it's uh, it's amazing a couple of things are kind of amazing about the whole thing is that the amount amount of like social media stuff like within our circle within our you know bmx circle i guess is amazing it's amazing the amount of comments, uh, posts, people that are taking sides. Uh, I don't know if I've ever, if I've seen it kind of quite like that. I don't think I've seen anything quite like that uh, yet on, on social with, in regards to somebody or an incident. The other thing too, which I think could be um, interesting for us because I, when you read these things, it looks like there's a different sides to it. I don't know if there's not, you know, there's the side that, you know, in the heat of the moment, you're a, we're all athletes. Uh, he's a, prof, you know, pro, a professional, uh, call Hall it of mentality. Famer. Right. You, you, in the moment you, you know you're you're competitive so things happen that's one side of it like this happened to him he it's not the coolest thing but you know he's competitive and he knocks somebody down you know that that's that's and i think the the right? person that, that be... has the person that's really stuck up not stuck up for him but the person that has is probably the face of that opinion is fellow hall of famer eric roop big daddy is eric yeah yeah and yeah. eric eric has known harry and raced against harry since the 70s yep. and continue to race uh, directly against him now so he certainly has and and has knows knows harry personally so he has a different perspective on it 
Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, you have these other ones, the other comments of people that, you know, that don't know Harry or don't know Charlie and are just kind of like either jumping on, which I don't disagree, are jumping on the bandwagon or let, or, you know, giving their opinion that, hey, because all they saw was the clip and they say, and they're saying that that, that was wrong. Like we, we shouldn't on the, I think the big saying is take it out on the track. Not, not when the race is over. Mm. Right. That, that I seem to see that a lot. Um, and then you have, of course, maybe the other side of it that the people that might know Harry uh, or there's some history there and they're like, this isn't the first time this has happened before. This is the way he is. And we're kind of like glad that it actually was captured on, on, on a video, you know, and that, so, so there are so many different sides of it. Uh, I don't want to say that, that we just look at, because we have our opinions and I think it wouldn't be right if we just kind of like went off our own, but I think it'd be fair if we were able to just look at it all and then just kind of we could give our opinion of course but because that's what we are but at the end of the day I, I i would prefer that we all just didn't have that one opinion and then throw it out there does that make sense no i think it, it doesn't because yeah, no, i know how you i know how you feel but huh. jv yeah. here i jv i understand what you're saying but here's the thing man people watch us because they want to hear an opinion Right. They, they want to hear our thoughts. Yeah, no, I, I think we and have our opinion, it. but I think, I think we, yeah, I, I, th not, I think it's just I, fair that. Yeah. We should acknowledge that other people have other opinions. Right. I exactly. agree. Exactly. I agree. Exactly. And who, and, and who are we, right? Who we're, we're just four old BMX guys as well. Right. So yeah. who are we to, to, um, say that our our opinion is the only way right I, you have to respect that other people see it different ways right so exactly right. exactly well I, I let would me just go ahead hollywood <laughs> let me just say you're assuming i have the same opinion that you three do that's right so here's the thing that's true um here here's what i here's what i've really noticed and i i thought i'm, I'm sitting on my tractor today i get a lot of time to think while i'm out there working on the tractor and i was thinking about it and I really, what I'm, what I'm noticing, and you, you touched on it a little bit, JV. Um, there's segments of, of within clearly BMX people are very passionate. It doesn't matter what it is. They're passionate people about their beliefs and, and man, they're, they're strong about it. Right. And they're, and they're vocal. They, they get up on the soapbox, myself included. Right. And they're, Growing away. And, and so, um, but what I, what I, what I'm finding is there really are people that have only been in the sport for two years and, and they only know Harry because he came to the, he came by their local track and he did a clinic. Right. And, th and that was a, that was a good, they had a good clinic and they had a good experience. Hey, hats off to them that they had a good experience and Harry provided them a good experience. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. I think that's awesome that, that that worked, right? And that was a good thing that happened. Um, then you see people that have been around a little bit longer and they've heard a few things about Harry. And so you see them with a slightly different opinion. And then you see, uh, Justin, we are insiders. We hear a lot of inside stuff that nobody, not just a little, we absolutely are deep inside behind the scenes and we hear a lot of things that is not public knowledge there's a lot of things that are now because of this have become public knowledge about harry that we all knew i'm sorry we all heard happened we right didn't know, we right heard. so um i when i looked at it um the elbow to me uh, we've thrown harder elbows playing foot down. So I don't think it was right. And I think it was absolutely chicken shit to do it at the finish line. 
And like I posted, I'm not surprised because that is how Harry always does his stuff. He does them in a chicken shit way. So that didn't surprise me at all. It's always that way. And he always rides off. He doesn't stand up. And like you said, Justin, he doesn't, he doesn't address the issue. He just drills somebody and then runs off. Right. And so that's really, that's poor, but the physicality of it, it wasn't, I didn't think it was that big of a deal, man. Like, um, and the deal with the girl and the kids in the finish line, I don't think that's on Harry, man. I don't think it's on Harry. I think it's on USA BMX. They shouldn't have kids in the finish line. I think they should have a corral that only riders finish in. And then to exit that corral, they have to go single file. And as they go single file out, they get their, they get their cards. Right. And you don't have that issue, right? Yeah. Good point. So, yeah, yeah that's so, a really good. It point. was just way too crowded after the. It was point. absolutely way too crowded, yeah. and and Harry, he's a, he's a he's a Hall of Famer. He's done more races. Shit, he's probably done more races than than us combined at this point. You know, he's raced a lot continually mm-hmm. for a long time. Yeah, Harry knows the score when you come into the finish, man. He's he's come into crowded finish lines. Many, many times. So there is a bit of responsibility yep. on him to hit his brakes. And he didn't because he lost his temper. Oh. And all he could see was Charlie's hip. And all he wanted right. to do was hit it as hard as he could. Well, he, he was the he was the last finisher. And he came in really hot. Absolutely. You know, the other two guys were laying on the ground that were behind him. So That's right. right. He, he absolutely... There is a responsibility on Harry. I believe there is a responsibility on Harry. I think he came in there way too fast. He knew there was people in there, but there should not. There, I think in the future, USA BMX should not have anybody in a specified finish corral. So that doesn't happen. Right. And so if, if, if in the next race, when Harry did, I should say the next time Harry decides to hit somebody in the back at the finish line, there won't be kids in there that are going to get hit. Yeah. That's a good point. Right. I mean, he came in hot, but he came in hot because he, he had he a mission. See, I mean, yeah, he, he was, saw, it was, the intent was there. Well, yeah, the intent was there. there. Right. Yeah. He was, ta- he was, was targeted. Kind of, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Was, he, he totally had a target. Oh, 100%. Totally. I mean, it's, yeah. it's clear as day. There's no, there's yeah. no, and I think Charlie just got in the way. I think Harry was trying to pin that little girl, man. I just want to nail her. <laughs> and Charlie got in the way. And sorry about that, Charlie. <laughs> hey, well, that was really good on Charlie then, right? To, to yeah. Hero it. Charlie Williams for saving that little girl from being <laughs> yeah. I mean. No. But it, here's the here's the thing, um <laughs> I think I think one of the things, right? So I I commend the guys at Daylight um for not putting up with Harry's crap. I think I think that was the right thing to do. If it had been Harry's first time ever doing that, I would say that that would be excessive to get him off the team. I think I, I think I think if it was his first time, I think you give him the opportunity to apologize for his actions and it needed to be a sincere apology, not the bullshit one that he made. And then I, I never did see it. Oh. It's, that's because oh, he deleted oh, yeah. it after he lost he deleted his it. So he apologized and then he deleted it and then commented that he would do it again in some comments and stuff. There's I did see of, that. There's tons of posts out there that he's done and he's really gone all over the place. I've seen other places where he's posted that he's very sorry and he shouldn't have done it. So that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all over the place. But I, I do, I commend the guys at Daylight. I think they did the right thing based on Harry's history. Um, I don't think the, the act, it's, it's not the action, right? It's not the very specific action. It's the, it's the catalog of Harry Larry for four decades and what he's done over those four decades. That is, that's what I believe is driving this absolute firestorm of people people have people have he's stole money from people off offering them prints that he never delivered and kept their money as i understand it he's taken money from uh races and as a track operator i don't know if that's true i, I don't not. know if that's true or not right but, you know who knows I, what 
all I know is like I, I'm not perfect. You guys aren't perfect. Nobody's perfect, but but he's had a a pretty long track record of of conduct that hasn't been that great, whether right. it's on the track or off. You know, dude, I'm not proud of some, I'm not proud of when I when when John Purse cleaned me out in the last turn and I kicked <laughs> at him. That was bad, dude. Yeah. That was a that was a bad thing to do, but, but I'll I, say, it, yeah. and that was he the moment, but it was on the track. You're right. It was right. he the moment. It was on the track, and then when I got off the track, Clayton told me that I was disqualified for the weekend, and and I, dude, I had to shake his hand and, and take it. I had to say, yeah, <laughs> I messed up. My dad said the same thing. My dad told me the same thing. Dude, you shouldn't have kicked him, <laughs> like. What do you, what did you think was going to happen? I mean, you know, like, like my dad taught me, if you, if you're mad at somebody and you really want to get them back, get them back in practice. And that's the thing. It's like, there's consequences to your actions. Right. Like somebody said to me, uh, oh, it's like cancel culture and all this shit. I was like, no, it's not. I was like, it's called accountability. And, and, and. As adults, we all have to be accountable for our actions in right. everything that we do in I, life. There's going to be consequences to all of our actions. Sometimes, sometimes the consequences are, are good. Sometimes they're not so good. So, right. And, and, here's, and here's another thing that I think is absolutely feeding the fire of this, right? There's two more things that I think is really feeding the fire. One uh, is the information that is being provided by people that were firsthand accounts of things that Harry has done and said to the, to them, some of them in a physical nature. And, and that is like, dude, that's gnarly. It's next level. I'll let other pe- people can find that. If you guys want to talk mm-hmm. about that, you can, but yeah. I think that's really fueling it. Second is Harry's conduct on these websites and on these these um, in these uh, little spots on Facebook, yeah, there's, there there's no remorse, right? And and instead of being remorse, it's really crazy, man. You'll you'll see a, a, a half-assed apology, and then you'll see a very aggressive, challenging post towards people, challenging people <laughs> you know like really aggressive man and like so it's yeah. all over the place and so what people are seeing is dude what the hell is wrong with this guy like like uh, uh most people would just say i messed up shouldn't have done that i'll try to do better i'm sorry if anybody was injured I'm sorry to Charlie. I'm sorry to the girl. I'm sorry to my sponsor. I'm sorry to USA BMX. I messed up. I hope you guys can forgive me. Right? Like, or go it. radio, or go radio silent, or radio silent. Right. But, but not with an explanation, right? Because what I saw was a half-assed apology and then an explanation about some guy crashed and got hurt, and so I was mad about him. Dude, don't justify your mistake. Don't try to justify it you're you messed up right. you have to own that and that's the that's the yeah. one thing that harry from what i understand and what i can see harry doesn't have the ability to do when it comes to the things that he messes up and when he messes up and he's he's done it a number of times over four decades he doesn't have it doesn't seem that he has the ability to say i'm an idiot and i messed up I got to do better. Yeah. I never see that. You know, you you didn't see it. And I think, and, and, you know, that's part of kind of what bothers me. The the biggest part that, that gets me is that he's a hall of famer. And if you're a BMXer and you know, that is, that is the, you know, other than being getting a factory ride, the pinnacle would be inducted into the hall of fame. I mean, that is, and a lot of the people that are, like reacting to posts here. I mean, that is where we all would have, you know, would love to get to you. You two are right. So, I mean, right. there, and, 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 and to me, 
I would be more pissed that there is somebody that is in your, you know, in your elite group. Correct. That is not prof being professional or or being the role model, like you have a responsibility, you know, you have a responsibility when you get inducted to the hall of fame of, you know, of what, of our sport, you have a responsibility. Now you, yeah. people are supposed to look up to you. And if you don't appreciate that, or you don't act that way, then it's, it, it, it makes me angry because I'll never get there. And a lot of us will never get there. And he takes it for granted that he's there, you know, so that, and that, that to me is the biggest, is one of the biggest issues that I have and that I, that I don't like about it. I mean, I don't know Harry, you know, I know, of course, we, I know about all the stuff because I'm in right. the circle, but, but, you know, like. You, you know what, and the it's things that personal. you know within the circle yeah. are, are some things that he said to us about either totally. oh my our God. podcast yeah. Or, or yeah. you know, he's made some disparaging comments about our podcast and what we're doing. Right. Harry, yeah. Harry was on. Harry was on my radar since I was nine years old, probably nine years old. And uh, man, look at dude, you guys! I got to show you what my beautiful wife just brought me. More <laughs> food. <laughs> <laughs> just about to of tell course. a fantastic old school BMX every <laughs> every story and wait time <laughs> out. Wait. Now we gotta watch you eat. No. So yeah, listen. now now this so the, let me tell you this happened. <laughs> 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 so, Great, fantastic. So no, listen, when I was when I was like probably nine years old and at La Mirada, old school guys know about La Mirada. It was a kind of an iconic track back in the day. And uh, uh, hold on, you set it up. So it was a track that was held in a big regional park. That's right. And there were no bleachers. It was you, you rode it's a slightly downhill track. Yeah. And it was gr grass, grass hills, grass hills everywhere. And everyone came and had picnics and sat on blankets. And, and it was a big family, natural, you know, uh, auditorium that everyone raced through. Yeah. It was like a, it, it was, it was, it reminds me of like an outdoor motocross race in Europe. Is what it looked like. I would say if you took if you took dirty wow. fast and you put grass around the entire track, <laughs> right, and there were no tents, that's yeah. what La Mirada would. That's right. what La yeah, Mirada yeah. would like. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. I, I actually went back there a couple of years ago on a, on a, when I was calling on a shot, and I was close to the park. I I actually parked, took ten minutes and walked over the hill and like was like wow man, because it was so it was it was it's ingrained in my that was a place for me. Like that was a place for me when I started my racing. So um, anyways, long story short, we're at the power light 1000. Harry's racing. He's one of the top guys. My dad's the, I believe my dad was the corner official in the first turn and Harry crashed and he fell down and my dad went over to help him up and grabbed his bike and then tried to, you know, grab by his arm and help him up. And, and Harry squared up to my dad and was just like, of course I'm okay. Leave me a and tried to like get in my dad's face. And I'll, I'll never forget how mad my dad was when he, my dad didn't get mad at very many things. And he was so mad that, you know, we were new to this. We were kind of new to the sport at that time. And he, he just couldn't believe that he was trying to help this guy. And, and that was, that was the, uh, the reaction that he, that he garnered from him. And so I always remembered that. Right. I always remembered that my dad, that, that that guy had that effect on my dad. Right. So it, in, it ingrained in me and I always watched Harry, man. And then I always watched how he conducted himself and how he would allow his intensity. He's one of the most intense racers ever. And he would Agreed. allow his Agreed. intensity. Right. Agreed. And, and, and that served him well. And bad, that was a double-edged sword, right? Because it helped him achieve at a level that he did. But he never knows how to shut it off, right? And so the emotion boils over and he can't control it. And I, I watched from the time I was eight or nine years old, I always watched Harry. And I would watch him do things like that. Like kids coming up and asking him for autographs on the back of the hill and get away from me, I'm trying to concentrate. Stuff like that, dude. Like it just... It always got under my skin that he was a bad egg, that he just 
he lost sight of of a lot of the things about BMX. And so <clears throat> for me, what frustrated what frustrates me, JB, I think your frustrations are very valid and they're 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 spot on. I agree. What frustrates me is that there's so many people that idolize this guy and look up to this guy and they they don't know how he's treated so many people for so long. It it's it's bad. It's not nice. And I know he's had nice moments with people and I'm glad people have had nice moments with Harry. I I really am. And I don't want bad things for Harry. I hope Harry gets help and I hope Harry really gets these demons that he's fighting taken care of. I I don't I don't wish bad things on any humans, but I also don't give him a hall pass for his behavior. He absolutely should be held accountable for all the nasty things that he's done and said to people. You know, so for, but for me, I've, I've yeah. watched him. I've, I've, because of the effect of my dad coming back and being so mad, that was like, wow, something really crazy happened for my dad. Right. To be that and, and let me point out, it happened in front of everybody at the, in right in the middle of the, this grass oh, auditorium, yeah. Absolutely. you know, where everyone saw it. It didn't, where it happened had no bearing on how he was going to act because of all the people there had no, right. no bearing on him whatsoever. Well, and, and, and because I, I think I, I, Mike, I think he goes into a mode where nothing else is around at the time, right? Like he's, it's the same thing of when he came across the line and he hit Charlie, right? Like he didn't see that little girl. He didn't, he didn't see the the kids. And I, I don't think, I think if Harry, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt here. I think if Harry actually saw that, the, I maybe he would have not done what he did. But I think at that moment, he gets so mad and he gets so intense and so frustrated that he can't control his emotions. And he just barrels into Charlie. And then he, I think the reason Harry skirts off when he does those things is I think he hits the person. And he immediately has a release of that anger and then realizes, damn, I did it again. I can't believe I did that stupid shit. And he skirts off. That's what I think. Justin, you have a different opinion about that? I don't know. It's, it's, it's happened so many times. Um. But the, the big difference about this instance is it was caught on tape <laughs> for people to watch and for people to disseminate to everybody in the world to watch over and over and over again. Like the incident with your dad, the, right. the only people that saw that were, were there. Right. So. That's it. You know, it the, the, the times are different. This. I agree. And I think this is going to be a different thing for Harry, ma'am. Yeah. I think I th I think the circumstances with what he did with Mueller was a little bit different than this one as well because Chris put a pretty aggressive pass on him. And he did. And and, and he Mullered him, man. And on the track. Yeah. He did it. it yeah. Absolutely yeah. racing. I agree with you, Mike. He did it on the track, but he definitely put an aggressive move on him and he he ran. He ran Harry out of room on the track. And that's right. He did. We all know how Harry reacts to that. I mean, we like, you know what you're getting when you do that to Harry, that that is, you know, exactly what's going to happen. And if you don't, and you've ever raced Harry and you act like you don't, you're an idiot. So, but I can see in 88, it was a different time. There wasn't social media, but also there was, that was, I could see how a lot of people would have viewed that as, okay, Mueller got him. Granted, it's out through the finish line, but he got him back. This time, nothing happened. Yeah. Charlie got like squirrely. Yeah. That's a BMX was, race. It was Eric unprovoked, Roos, basically. Hey, Eric Root right. got squirrely in that same main in the rhythm section. He didn't happen to have somebody next to him and didn't clean him out. Mm. Right? Elise Post, in her second main on Friday night, got squirrely in the rhythm. There wasn't a girl next to her, so nobody got hurt. Charlie got squirrely. 
Papa G hit the back of him and fell and broke his leg, unfortunately. But dude, it's a BMX race. That's why we race eight people and it's not a time trial because that is part of the element. That mm-hmm. that can happen. That's that's what makes it BMX racing. Nothing, nothing dirty was ha- nothing dirty happened. One guy lost his temper and couldn't control it and went across the line and had to get that frustration out. Mm, at the cost, but at the cost of what, though? Really, at the cost of what? Well, we don't know yet. It, it well, we don't be. know the full extent. We do know that Daylight, his sponsor, his his main sponsor, ha- just, had to do what they had to do. I just read, I just read that uh, on the on the literally just before I got home that um, I think he got a ninety day suspension from USA BMX. I can't. Oh wow! I'm not positive about that, but I. I saw somebody post about that. So that would seem appropriate to me. Yeah. Because USA BMX has to look at what happened at that event. Mm -hmm. They can't look at what happened before that. They they can't take all the personal stuff that's coming out on internet. They, they, They can't take that into equation. They can only look at what happened and what they have evidence of at that event. Agreed. And so I think I, you know, I don't know. Is 90 days appropriate? It seems like it to me, but I, I think so. You know, there, there's, there are people out there that are calling for him to be banned for life and, and removed from the hall of fame and all that kind of stuff. I, I don't, I think that would be wrong. Personally. I don't. I, don't. I, I agree. The, inf- the, the, the infraction is what it is in right. that isolated incident. And, and they should, there should be a consequence for that action from the USA BMX. Agreed. And if the, and if he Agreed. does it again, then it should be more similar to if you get one, two, or three DUIs, right? Yep. The, the 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 penalty yep. becomes steeper for for a repeat offender, right? Right. But the but the punishment he's getting from everybody on the internet is one is is different. It's based yeah. on it's based on a bunch of information. Some of it may be absolutely accurate. Some of it is very accurate. It's firsthand information, and right. some of it's rumor mill. Right. I can tell you this: I spoke today with Richard Huvard from Daylight. I actually talked to him, and mm. uh, and he said, and he said, and I quote: "Take him taking Harry on in the first place was an effort to try to help him. He, uh, I really thought our program was different." And that would have a moderating influence, but I was wrong. It's not the one elbow that forced me into doing what we did. It's the knowledge that another one would certainly be coming. Right. Yep. He he said, I still hate to see everyone piling on him, but it is what it is. It's, Harry, it's Harry's body of work. Yeah. And, and like he said, he, he knew that the reason Daylight had to separate themselves is because of the... <clears throat> The effect it would have on their brand to continue to have him sure on the roster and showing his colors and like he's like he said knowing that the next one was coming right what right. was what about the um uh you know harry immediately wrote something about charlie being drunk was that is that just an is that just a um figure of speech or was did he did hey, any Jamie, any i any maybe that was a direct response to me Oh, okay. Yeah, I posted a comment on Facebook. I could go back and find it. Um, <clears throat> and he responded. Uh, he he put a post about. Um, he commented about him falling in the gate or being high or some something of those natures. Like I need oh. to. Oh. And I and I commented and I said, Harry, it's it you know. The irony of you posting about somebody being intoxicated is not lost in this post. <laughs> and so he said, yeah. And then he said, yeah, Charlie was drunk. So oh, he, he, claims, gotcha. he claims that Charlie was drunk when he got on the gate. I don't know if that's true or not. And so I didn't say I didn't agree with him or disagree with him because I don't know. So I didn't say to Harry, oh, bullshit. He wasn't drunk. I don't know. Right. I wasn't there. And that may be the, you know what? Maybe Harry saw Charlie over at the 
booth grabbing beers. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think I, we know so that. When, Again, irrelevant. It is. And I yeah, said that yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. And I said, it still doesn't dismiss what right. you did at the finish line. And if that was the case, you should have rolled across the finish line and grabbed an official and said, hey, this guy's drunk and that guy got his leg broken. But he didn't. So that's where the that's where the Good drunk point. comment came from, JV. Oh, I don't okay. think Charlie gotcha. was drunk personally. That's my opinion. Because if he I was, think... he, he, if he was, he's he's really fast after drinking a few beers. Yeah, that's what yeah, I, I would say that guy. <laughs> he put the whip down on everybody <laughs> yeah, this right. weekend. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I sp- I spoke to Charlie today, and uh, what was really funny was he said, "Mike, I, sp- I spent two days driving back." He goes, "I know there's a firestorm going out there, but he goes, I really not." not you know i'm behind the wheel i'm not paying much attention to it he goes you know it just just wasn't really active in the he's not active in it he's just trying to get home and get you know get back to normal yeah yeah but, yeah, well, but i do want to say one more thing about him wow what a performance and for a guy for a guy who quit racing uh and and his life went off the rails it went a different way and he fought his way back to get to where he could have a normal life again and to start racing again. Yep. And then to break his arm and need surgery and not be able to race for another year and a half, the courage to come back again yeah. and to get to where he is today. It's, it's, a, hard it's amazing. Courage and yeah. hard work. I mean, I say courage because brother, I don't know if I broke my arm like that. I don't know if I'd ever want to get back on the track again. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, so you know it kind of sucks that we're talking about this and not talking about that, that awesome pass in the last turn, which resulted in uh, a win for what was Tom Johnson? Yeah, is that his name? Yeah, yeah. He pa- <laughs> How about the fact that we're going like this? in the last corner? How about the fact that you said that Tom G- Johnson is that his name? <laughs> yeah, Tom Johnson. <laughs> no, that he was, had a- that was an awesome pass. He had a good race, man. He was yeah, he was he behind. Yeah. And, well, uh, the reason we're not talking about it is because we're the dirty knobs. I know, I know. And, but... and this is about really, <laughs> this is about '80s BMX, and 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 how how and why our the legend and Hall of Famer Harry Larry made uh, let his emotion get away from him, made a bad decision, and it is going to cost him a great deal, and uh, and although. I want to share with you one more thing. I also texted back and forth with Harry today. And uh, it, it, it was, it was, uh, it was a strange interaction between us. And, I, but I will share it with you later on. Yeah. It was a strange interaction between us. It just, so Mike, it's, you said. What's your opinion, Mike? You we said, haven't heard your opinion. On yeah. It. I, I was just, just going to ask that. Cause you said, you said your, your opinion may not be the same as ours. So, Curious to throw it back on you. My opinion. My opinion is based on a lot of things that you guys have said about being in the Hall of Fame. I, 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 you know, throughout my racing career, I took being a pro and a positive influence on people. Seriously, it was, you know, I, you know, besides being a joker, I also wanted to be a positive influence. I wanted to make the world around me better any way I can. I still do that. That's still where I'm about. Uh, I may I may cross the line myself at times. I may lose my, I may poor decisions sometimes. Uh, but fortunately, it hasn't cost me what it's cost Harry. That being said, I have I have seen and heard of several things that Harry has done that does not live up to what I believe a Hall of Famer should be. But that's be but that's because of the where I put the emphasis on my life and where I put the emphasis on the life I portray. If you, and I know that Eric group has been very vocal about supporting Harry and standing by him. And he has mentioned his, his faith in Christ. And, you know, and if you're a Christian, you are again, not just a hall of famer, but if you're a Christian, you're held to a higher standard and you're supposed to, you're supposed to portray your life in a certain way. And you're not, not to be hypocritical. So it, it, when you put both those together, that's like setting yourself up two, two bars up that you can't make mistakes like that. So my, 
Uh, I have maybe a different opinion based on that, in that even though he made th those mistakes in the past and those personal mistakes are coming to light, uh, those things are that are terrible, I mean, terrible. I, I have to, first of all, I have to forgive him. Whether he wants to be forgiven or not, I have to forgive him and give him the opportunity to do the right thing the next time. That doesn't mean that there's not a consequence today, which I think he's living through right now. And I think, and I think not, now that you say there's a 90 day USA BMX, you know, suspension, I don't know what that does for, for Harry. I, I know that it seems to me as an outsider, as a, as a, but as a USA BMX co-track operator, I have my I have my finger in that pie too. I see him going to tracks and doing clinics, and unfortunately, we've had a couple of run-ins at locals, Harry and I, verbal, and it's just he took a took he took some liberties, and uh, you know he's he, for some reason there was a chip on his shoulder about us having a podcast, um, and he made a personal jab at me in public, uh, which was you know here and or there, uh, you know I just rolls off my back, I just laugh it off and make a joke about it. But the fact that he does those things really makes me think that, yeah, that's the character he is. And it's not the best character you can be, in my opinion. And so I think that wh whatever happens to Harry now, it's well-deserved, no matter how it turns out. I hope that the 90 days isn't so long that he leaves the sport completely, because I would like to have him take a chance and redeem himself. I don't know that that's possible. I don't know that that's possible. Uh, but I hope, but I hope that people will give him a chance to do the right thing, and maybe with some guidance from someone along the way, he will. That's going to sound bad, but come to a senses, and make a make an apology, because it's hard to forgive somebody that they don't apologize for it, um, and make some sort of atonement. And that's my that's my two cents. Uh, I don't know if you guys agree with that or not. Uh, and then I have another I have a story to tell you about my, one of the first things I saw. I've seen Harry Larry get into it a number of times. So I have I have a couple stories to tell you about what I saw as a kid, as a young kid going to the BMX races. Yeah. Well, I first, let me ask you about my opinion. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's valid. And, yeah. and, and I, like, it's very, I will say you, yours is fairly neutral. Um, and, um, it's based in your faith. And I think that's good because that's what you always roll back to. Um, <clears throat> it's the same thing I told Eric group because I chatted with Eric, I, me and Eric were going back and forth on one of Bill Prince's posts. And I said, Hey man, if we talk about this, Bill's sense deleted it. And <clears throat> we were having a respectful conversation, but I just, I got tired of talking about it on like publicly, man. It, it's, it's just toxic. And so I said, if you want to talk about it, we'll, we can talk about it offline, not, not to continue to post this. Right. Um, and so I, I, I gave him a pretty direct viewpoint of, Harry and basically the same things I've said here. And he was like, I'm still standing behind him. I love this guy. Um, you know, I've known him for so many years. Uh, and he's a changed guy. And, you know, I, I disagreed with Eric. I said, I don't think he's a changed guy, but I said, you know what, Eric, you're bigger, you're, you're bigger than me. And, and Harry's really lucky to have you as a friend that's supporting you. And, I don't know if Harry's going to watch this, but I'm going to speak directly to Harry and say, dude, Eric really is supporting you in a really gnarly time when he doesn't have to. Like, it's risky for Eric Roop to do what he's doing. Yeah. He's taking a risk on, uh, like, he's, he's vouching for you, Harry. Eric is putting his impeccable reputation on the line because he does. He has a very, very good reputation. And Eric's saying, no, no. He, This guy's with me. 
Harry, you have a responsibility with that, dude. And you need to take that serious because a lot of your other peers that used to do that for you, they're gone. They're not those. You had a lot of guys that would vouch for you. that will not vouch for you now because you, mm. the things you've done. And so I hope he takes it serious. I, I hope that if he did receive a 90 day ban, I hope that he can really lean on Eric and Eric can be a pillar of strength for him. And that Harry can really genuinely be in that faith that he claims and, and be a witness to the, the power of that. Uh, and I hope he gets some help in those 90 days, man. I, I do. I want, I, I hope he gets help, but again, it, you, you have to be held accountable for your actions. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you get a hall pass. You, you, you got to do the work, man. It's hard. It's, it's, it's hard sometimes. And I, I hope, I hope <laughs> it would be amazing, right? It would be a really cool story if Harry was able to, to come back and genuinely yeah. be better. Right. And could, and could bear witness to, to being better. I mean, it, it would be an amazing story, right? So I don't know, man. I, I hope he's got Eric's in his corner. Eric's a good guy. Um, and I, I hope, I hope Harry gets better uh, through that. Justin on an earlier episode, one of the, a very early one, I talked about one of the gnarliest fights I ever saw in BMX. <laughs> I'm like 14 novice at the e at the eagles track in azusa maybe 13 knots i mean i was i was young and uh and i saw a knockdown drag out fist fight toe to toe between harry larry and kim his his own teammate kim jarbo and it was over a girl and i mean harry had lost his mind um you know and, and kim jarbo was like hey oh whoa whoa but it got to a point where Kim goes, well, let's go at it then, man. He, he just wasn't backing down. And dude, they fought like, you know, to me, they were men. But when I think back, they were like 17, 18 years old. Right. But they stood toe to toe and just threw blows. Wow. At that same track, at a different night, I saw Bobby Creek, a local racer, in the second turn, push Harry high. Harry crashed. Bobby kept going. Harry picked his bike up walked 15 feet over to the last turn and stood on the top of the last turn holding, or no, I'm sorry, stood on the second turn and the last straightaway went right past it. He stood on the top of the turn, held his bike up and just waited. Bobby Creek's coming out of the main event, coming down the last <laughs> straightaway, and Henry just throws his bike straight on top of him and he wrecks. I mean, wow. that's, yeah. yeah. And that's that's me as a novice seeing the pro, Harry Larry, <laughs> that's how you act. Wow, 70s, dude, that was in the seventies. Seventies, yeah. that was seventies. Right. He was he was on JMC, right? Yeah. So, so wasn't he like sixty two years old back then? He <laughs> did look it. I'll tell you that yeah. he always looked older than he is, always, and he was always like as he said, always so wound tight, man. Just hey, man. I know. imagine playing, imagine playing Pictionary with that guy. Dude, I, I'd be, I would, I wouldn't want to mess up. Listen, I, I, I want to say also, man, there, there's a, Harry deserves respect for what he's accomplished in the sport, right? He's a, yeah. he, he's a fantastic bike rider. And I've of seen, Harry, I've seen Harry do some things at Honda Hills on his bike that were really amazing. He's a good bike rider. Dude, he won, he won his cruiser main at the Grand. So, I mean, I like I like to I like to see positive. In, I like to try to see positive in people, man. Right. And and so there's a lot. Harry's a lot, like you said, Mike. He is a legend in our sport. Love him or hate him, yeah. he's he he's ingrained in the fabric of our sport. I mean, his cover, um, is that was my favorite cover of BMX Action. I said that yeah. when we talked about it before. Like it's an iconic cover. He's ingrained there, man. And, you know, I guess it goes back to JV, right? Like, dude, take that responsibility. Like, it didn't, it didn't have to be this way, man. 
It yeah. doesn't have to be this way. Think, think about how powerful a message it would be if within the next 90 days, he takes some anger management courses and he comes back to BMX and he's, and he says, listen, as a competitor, you have to be on fire, but you have to control it. And you have to, and you have to be able to focus that intensity into your performance and nowhere else. You know, imagine that all the good that could come from this, if, if he went down that path instead. Yeah, It'd it would be, it would be great. It would be great. But it he needs be. to do the work, right? And it yeah. needs to be genuine. It needs to be, he needs to do the work that he needs to do. You know, when I think about his intensity, it's a lot, a lot like the way JV drives. <laughs> Do you know, I just, you know, it just uh, honk, 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 honk. Ah. <laughs> it is. And, you know, I, I don't think I've driven with anyone that curses at people as much as JV does. Now he does it with the windows up, you know, the air conditioning <laughs> on. It's not, but he's like, oh, look at this prick nasal. Doesn't he know? Turn left. What are you doing? The light's green. Honk, honk, honk. It's a very aggressive, intense experience. And it's, it does, you know, it just tells me that, you know, you can still be normal and have a good time. <laughs> hey, you know, well, you know, who else was a really, really intense racer back in the day was Greg Hill. Yeah. yeah. Very, very yeah. intense. On, on, I would say, I, I think you could argue that he was on an intensity level that was close to Harry. I would agree. And, yeah. and so, and yet, I can't think of a single time that Greg Hill came across the finish line and rammed somebody or threw his bike on top of somebody. I can't think of any time he didn't race pretty cleanly. I don't know. Right. And so I didn't, ra I didn't race him. What, what do you think, Mike? Do you, do you yeah, think he no, was I, yeah, no, he wasn't the kind of guy that would take you out, you know, go out of his way and take you, you know, and go NorCal on you. Yeah. <laughs> but so, he wouldn't pimp you. He would cut you off, you know. If you yeah. got a better start, and he would move over, he'd move over on you for sure. Yeah. He would, well, he would to. pass you on the inside. He did all those things. Um, he did absolutely t-bone me once and push me you, over a turn one time at, Br at Braddock, <laughs> and he should have been DQ'd. <laughs> you had something. You had something with. You had words with Greg. I think it was one of the races. I can't remember which one, but didn't you have a thing? Mike with him? Well, we had words. I just said, you know, I, I beat him. Yeah, we had a thing. Yeah. Yeah. You had and the thing. magazines had it egged it on, but we had a thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it was it wasn't more than I turned around and pointed at his face and said, Right. Because I beat him finally. And I said, Do you respect me now? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And he said no. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I had the last word and he said no. And I put yeah. my head down. And, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I guess I, not. Right then. What do you I, expect, though, right? Yeah, <laughs> I guess my point is right. Like you can, you can be intense, and and Greg, Greg proves that you can, you can have intensity at a very, very high level and a lot of focus, right? And then you can do exactly what we talked about. Would, that would be great if Harry could come back in ninety days and show that, which is be extremely intense about your racing. I think it's awesome when people are. Man, I try to get my kids to be more intense about their racing. So, I mean, I love it when I love it when people are focused and they and they are doing something with intent, right? And and they and they they're trying at a high level to be extremely intense and focused. Yeah, I like that. But you can shut it off at the finish line. You can. Greg proved it for decades. So apparently you can't shut it off when you get home, when you have a bad race either. Mm. <laughs> apparently coming home after uh, Patty, Patty Mac said, you know, it was tough for her when Harry would have a bad weekend, he'd come home and take it out on her and the kids. Then I somebody mean, else, I forget the gentleman's name, but someone said his, he was recently, his mother was recently dating him. Harry, mm. excuse me. Harry was recently dating his mother. And the same thing was physical with not only his mother, but with her kids. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a problem that goes, this intensity is a problem that goes beyond the track. And, uh, and EC and I have a friend, a mutual friend who had 
had a huge run in with Harry that was uncalled for. Right. And and he was threatened, and he was threatened with violence and with with firearms. He was threatened. Yeah, it was pretty gnarly, man. That <clears throat> I saw the text. I was shown the text, and I man, it was. <clears throat> I mean, I had heard I had heard things about Harry prior to that, but I didn't know that it was at that level. Uh, and then when I saw those things, I was. Like, Oh my gosh, man. I can't believe he's saying those things to you. And he's like, I don't even know the guy. He just thinks I'm being with his girl, but I'm not, I don't even know his girl. So. So and EC, I, and I, EC and I both saw the text from Harry, Harry Harry's text to our friend. This person. So that was, uh, that was, that was a, a real eye opener for me um, more. And then asking um, other other people in the industry about like, Hey man, is this like normal? And they're like, Oh my gosh, dude, you have no idea. Mm. Um, God, dude, what a bummer. Hey man, I know, I know, I know we're an eighties thing. And I know this, this episode is about this, but it was also at the grands man. And there was a lot of cool stuff that happened in the grands too. So I don't know how you feel. If, Hollywood, if you want to, if you want to edit grand stuff out, specific grand stuff, then you can do that. I, you know, I don't watch these things anyways. <laughs> so, so I won't know. You know, I don't know. You know, I we don't I'm actually air the podcast. Yeah, right. we, yeah, we, we, yeah. we just we just we just we use this as, a, as an excuse to get away from our wives and talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we actually yeah. don't have a podcast. It's just us talking. Yeah, it is right. exactly. You don't know this, but I actually don't even record these. <laughs> did, yeah. did uh, did you guys watch any of the grands other than the than the few mains? Yeah, I did. Uh, I did. On and off. On and I, off. I watched. Right. I watched the um the race of champions a little bit and and the in the grands yeah my uh, i had specific motos written down from my from one of from my local kids yeah yeah did you really yeah i i watched and cheered and texted them immediately after their motos yeah that's cool that is a good track operator yeah dude i was fired up yeah that's that that's fantastic well listen man for me I, I had I had some things that I thought were pretty pretty bitching about the grands. Go ahead. I I I love watching the new the uh the well he didn't win the amateur title the seventeen twenty guy did, but I love watching Sean Day. Dude, did you see his start? Sixteen X, yeah, it, yeah, dude, holy shit! And, and the sixteen X, uh, and he is an amazingly talented rider. He won the the nag challenge on friday night as a 16 year old he beat the 17 20 year olds um, oh, that was awesome so i loved watching that um i thought it was awesome that elise willoughby got on her 11th dude has amazing 11th pro title 11 crazy. pro titles dude it's insane yeah, that's, that's crazy um joris got his sixth pro title i thought that was amazing um, I thought it was kind of cool to see Terry T in the mix. <laughs> Terry oh, T. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I didn't see him. Yeah, dude. Terry made the main. Oh, got, all right. I, yeah, Terry got fourth in the main. So I was, I was cheering Shit. on Terry T. All right. Yeah. Uh, Nick Wait, Long does this oh, thing. Oh, let me just tell you, I yeah. did text. I did text. Mr. T and I texted back and forth after that. Oh, I was yeah. proud, dude. I gotta be in the. I was. Don't let him. Don't let those NorCal guys know. But I was proud of him. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I thought I thought that was really cool, man. I know Nick Long does this. Uh, he does this thing where he raises a bunch of money for the pro purse. I thought that was cool. Um, I thought I love that Pelton's team, the Rift team, got a bunch of awards. Um, it was cool to see Corky Gainsford racing. Yeah. I loved. I loved seeing that. Um. Colin from uh, Yoshimura was racing. He actually raced a full suspension mountain bike in one of his one of his veins. Yeah. So I thought I thought that was pretty funny. Um, and then uh, I got to see my friend. Uh, well, our friend Leslie Carter. She was actually racing. That was great to see. Whoa. her. Yeah. That was great yeah. to see her. Yeah. And I don't think and I don't I don't remember Leslie ever going to an ABA Grands. Hmm. She was an MBL racer. Yeah. 
So I know, I know Leslie's had some, some health issues. You know, I'm friends with her on Facebook and I see him periodically and it was super cool to see her um, be able to get out there and enjoy the bike and, and ride again at a, at a high level like that. So wow. those did, she make, did she, she did. make the main? She did. Yeah, she All did. Right. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. How about, how got... about Rob Taylor winning, winning his main on, yeah. on racing? Yeah. That was pretty good. Yep. I saw that. That was cool. Yeah. And, hey, uh, you, it's always you... good to watch, watch uh, Dick Cheeseburger race. I was going to say that. I was just going to say, dude, yeah. he was not only was he flying and smoked those fools as Todd Lyons would say, yeah. but with style, I mean, and jumping everything. And he was, yeah. dude, he was dude, rad. Yeah. His rhythm. He Still was so good. He was jumping through the rhythm. It was so yeah. good. Yeah, it was awesome. The dude's oh. got talent. He's got skills yeah. like talent. Yeah. 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 I know. I like Shout that. out to his dad too. He's we race in the same class. No way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you know what? Oh, go ahead, JV. You know, you know what I know? You know what I noticed? And I don't watch a lot of, of uh, modern day. I don't watch really any of it, but um, when I, when I was racing 17 and over X was the first, was the last expert class. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And huge. And, and now it goes all the way up to six, almost 60 years or something. Yeah. 56 and expert. over, right? 50, 56, 56 and, over. and over. Yeah. I was like, I was watching that going, what the, that is amazing. They, they saved the best for last. That's they right. saved the best for last. Yeah, right. Exactly. That's right. It was a 16 over class, right? But I was like, we would be on the gate and and we would be they would they would do the older classes you know like the old the old yeah. guys racing cruisers yeah and you didn't, they weren't even that fucking old they were dude and look, remember when remember when we <laughs> thought remember when we thought shag and ev shag, yeah honestly uh-huh. were like old yeah. dudes racing in right. the old guys uh-huh. class dude right yeah. think, think about than we are now yeah think about the dads in the cruiser class and they were in I their mean, 20s then. And we're like, God, those guys are old. Brother, they didn't, it there wasn't goes no to old... show you. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, it, show, it shows you, I think, I mean, I don't know if people are in better shape now, older, or they're, or, <laughs> you know, or they're just continuing to race longer and they stay in fairly good shape. I mean, but the fact that the age groups go that high in that, as experts i mean that's that's a lot that says a lot well there's a downside to it too parent, practically okay go ahead there's a downside to it too <laughs> a shout out to our to our former teammate chris blackburn oh yeah the downside is no matter how good a shape we are we are getting older and our bones yeah. are getting brittle yeah and when our brothers hit the ground in that in those older classes, that's man, right. it seems to just be devastating. It yeah. is, yeah, that's true. And our, and our and our former teammate Chris CW writer Chris Blackburn, dude, what was the extent of what was the extent of his injuries? I think a collarbone, ribs, collapsed lung. It was a lot. Five uh, ribs, con- concussion, maybe. and a concussion. Yeah, and a, and like a, a bleed around his heart or something. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty gnarly, man. He's on his way ho- on a drive home. He had a friend fly from Virginia to come get him to drive yeah. him back home uh, yeah. so he could get home. Or else they told him he wouldn't be able to fly for two weeks. So right. as we speak and as this thing released, he's he'll be he'll be on the yeah. road home. So and, and Alfonso, is he out of the hospital on his way home? I don't know. Papa G. I don't. I don't know. I don't know him either. No, well, and another one of our another one of our teammates, and, I, and I, I'm not going to say his name. But uh, apparently he had a crash and, and uh, separated his shoulder and stuff, and it had to head home. But I, I he hasn't made it public, public, so I won't say his name. Mm. But well, wow, yeah. Hope those guys will heal up and come out to Wheelhouse BMX in Prescott Valley, Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? You I'll know give what him I'm the like... what for. I'll crash him. I had this then. There better not be any little girls in the finish line. I'll wreck them too. You know what I? You know. You know what I would. You know what I'd love to see at the grands. I yes. Would love, yeah, because I, 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 me and Ethan sit and watch the grands. We we actually watch quite a bit of the racing, and uh, just, we just have a good time watching it. We we love it. So, um, 
I would love to see them like where the second turn is. I'd love to see them instead of making it a big giant hairpin turn. I'd love to see them make it a 90, then a big 180, and then another 90 back. Wow. You mean Eric Carter would like to see more turns? Yeah. Imagine that. You want to throw Imagine a European, more European berm in there too? Yeah. I know why they I know why they don't do it. I know like it it disrupts the flow, right? And they yeah. have a lot of motos. They're into the high what is it? What they have in the high eight? Yeah, it's bullshit. I'm gonna call bullshit on that though. Every time I see that, I go, Oh, you got so many motos because you got three people in the gate. Yeah. 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 Well, dude, going, in our day we had to... eight people in the gate. Right. Yes. I yeah. agree. But, and I understand why they do it. I don't disagree with it. I don't hey, disagree did, with it. Did y'all ever run a 10 man gate? I raced yes. a couple times with a 10 man. Couple times NBL. <laughs> couple times yeah. NBL. Anyways, I'd like to see, I'd love to see something other than a 180 turn. I know they, I know why they do it because they just keep pumping out the races and, yeah. and potentially it could disrupt the flow. You might have, some more tangle ups and some crashes. Not that that mattered because they ran the races while dudes were laying out <laughs> multiple motos, man. <laughs> running them. Yeah. Dude, how about the deal? As long as the officials run out on the track and put their hands behind their back and stand there, it's all just keep running them. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a comb with legs. You're just right. a comb <laughs> with legs. Keep going. I, I would like to see, I would like to see a lot of things. One, I'd like to see more show. You know, yeah. Have fireworks in there. Have have jumping Jimmy Pratt jump cars through a fire ring. Have a, <laughs> have a dirt jump contest. Dude, hey, yeah. I had a rapper. I want to see. They did have a rapper. Wow. I'd like to see. Well, oh, I didn't see that. Was that? Uh, was that? I caught a little bit of it. Somebody somebody posted it, but yeah. I had to shut Wrong that off. I'm sure that our that our cruiser class was not into it. <laughs> hey, you know we could put we could put Eric Eric Carter sitting at a table in the infield eating. For like twenty minutes, that would be a show. People well, will watch it now. <laughs> I'll just tell you right now. There's one thing I would. There's there's one thing I would seriously would love to see at the track. Would make totally on track betting. Yes, because EC and I had the best time. We just went. We sat in the stands with a fistful of ones, and you'd pick some squirrely novice. Oh, I'll take the guy with the orange helmet, and EC would say, "No, no, look at that guy with the with the leopard skin. I got him." And then. We were just changing dollars. We just picked some <laughs> random novice race. Oh, what about this guy? I'll take number seven. Who's hot? Yes, dude. <laughs> in, in all seriousness, one of the things that I wish we could see uh, on the coverage was would be the actual start of the race because they're running them so fast. Yeah. The, the guy, they're already through turn one before they go back. It's like, yep. you know, you, you, watching the start in the first straight, that's like, he to me you know dude yeah. hard to announce right yeah well they yeah. yeah they don't pick them up they don't pick uh -uh. those guys up until they're yeah uh, through where the, the pro section was that's yeah. when they, the announcers are first picking them up yeah uh, that's crazy man uh how about bonnie hutland i know yeah that was great yep doubled at the roc and yeah a little a little tougher on the, at the grands but she still did great what did she get second or third she got third at the grands right there was, um, there was i don't know the, the the girl that was in front of i think Susie levan got second yeah and then Bonnie i think she was got third, third but yeah. she, got, Unless, she got two yeah. she got two third places in class yeah. in yeah. cruiser although if cruisers don't count what do you <laughs> girls really don't count girl cruiser really doesn't count <laughs> i don't know yeah. Bonnie, girl cruiser girl that's w the wnba oh, of, yeah, so bonnie's yeah. a badass in in all aspects of her life she's had a tough year yeah. So keeps riding though, man. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I saw her two weeks ago at, at Mrs. Hatfield's birthday. Oh yeah. Margie Hatfield's birthday. Shout out to my boy little Hollywood, Jackson Meadows. <laughs> I got two little I got a little picture right here. He drew of me and another one over here he drew of me. No way. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Fantastic. He's my boy. Yeah. Hey, so each of you guys posted something on Facebook about Harry. I know, I know that Justin, you had the first one, the first one, and the whopper that started it all. And uh, and and I, courageous. I love that you were articulate, and you didn't say anything that you know most people had. Most people agreed with what you came out with. 
EC, you had a pretty lengthy one. It was directly with Harry, I think. Yeah, I, I had a few that, that he responded a little bit to me, yeah. So most of my, I would say my biggest conversation was with Eric Roop, uh, the most lengthy. Um, and then there were some other people that I didn't know that were, I don't, nobody, nobody really disagreed with my viewpoints on it. And I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't really like, I don't know. I just, yeah. So I had some comments. JV? I didn't really have big comments about it. I mean, I just little ones here and there um, with what people were saying, but I, I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't like do a big paragraph out there about, you know, I didn't think it was right. And I said, I didn't think it was right. I'm from a hall of famer. And you know, that was my big one. I had my one biggest post surprise. Oh, oh sorry. Go ahead. I, I want to say one thing. My, the biggest surprise I had, um, the amount of well-known people in the sport that have contacted me privately saying, man, you hit the nail on the head. This is long overdue, blah, 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 blah. I was like, it's, it's been kind of crazy. Um, and, you know, they, they've chosen not, not to be public about their opinions, which is fine. They're entitled right. to that. That's great. And I'm going to, I'm not going to um, divulge any of those names, but uh, they, they, they all clearly have been waiting for something huh. like this to kind of happen. So I had one post, two words Bush League. <laughs> yeah. mm. Just Bush League. That's all that it's, action was. It was Bush League. And you, you posted that? Yeah. I put I, I, I put it on somebody's yeah, and I didn't just said, see that. Yeah. I ah, saw, I, it's all I, I had to it. say. It's all I, I had to say. It. It's pretty Bush League, man. You know, I, I probably mind. wouldn't have said anything if if that exact thing hadn't happened to me when I was 14. Somebody came up behind me after the finish line, crashed me, and I broke my collarbone in BL Grands. And it just really hit a effing nerve. For, he was saying, what, oh, what Harry did, it was heat of the moment and, you know, testosterone. I, I, I didn't get that thing about testosterone over and over again. Uh, you know, we're yeah. like, we're, we're really like intense. And, you know, it's Harry Larry, the most intense ever. And you got to understand that. No. That's when, well, that's when I said to him, my response to him was, hey, I get all that. But let's just let's just do it this way. Let's put Eric Roop in Harry's yeah. shoes for a moment. I said, Eric, I can't for the life of me think of a time that you have or ever would come across the line and do what Harry's done. You've got test. You're in the same race. You would never do that. And why would you never do that? And I said, because that's not how we <laughs> carry yourself as a person. That is who Harry is. That's how that's how Harry carries himself. That's how he's conducted himself since Azusa seventy six. Yeah, it's not changed, dude. No, no. Justin, man, you started this shit storm. This is your fault. <laughs> no, I didn't start it. <laughs> first guy, first one I saw on the internet was Justin's com Justin's comment. No, and uh, not only that, but I didn't see it. Sierra saw it, came running to me. Oh, did you see this? Oh my gosh! Well, oh my god! And it's Justin. He's so quiet, mild mannered. What happened? <laughs> and so that's what. And then every post since then, she's come up and said, "Oh, hey, did you see this?" So uh, other people are other people have are forming opinions, have opinions, or or at least are now aware of it. That would, like EC said, probably wouldn't even been involved in this kind of conversation but are now because of it so wow good one yep that was all justin's fault <laughs> i look if you didn't post if you didn't post something somebody else would have oh I know. anyway I know. hey justin you did you did like 
the jokes aside, yeah, you commented on it. You made you made a statement uh, and completely understand with the way you express yeah. why. And I don't think it's bad that you did, man. Um, right. Like you you weren't the one that rode the bike across the finish line and slammed into the guy, and you yeah. weren't the one that's done all the other things. No. I, I, I truly wish he can figure something out about himself and become a better person. I don't know. You know, I, as a kid, I looked up to him, you know, he, he was just the bigger than life character that I would see on the cover of magazines and see him at the races and, you know. Well, I, I said to him in a text today, I know you told me you'd never come on our podcast, but I'm going to put it out there. Harry, if you'd ever like to come on and share your side, whatever you like to say, you can consider this an open invitation. And I think, I think fellas, we stand by that. If no, he wants to come absolutely. on. Yeah. 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 Uh, this was, uh, this was important. It was, in gla I'm glad we did this. Uh, and our opinions matter. Our opinions matter. And people will be interested. I know, I know my opinion, Opinion was interesting to me, but I was way more interested to hear your opinions. Yeah. I hope it gets better, man. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I think it comes with accountability. I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people have spoken up. I agree. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. Glad we did this. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. Ain't any problem. I appreciate all you guys do, man. Norm normally, I'm just a, a a viewer like everybody else. So, you know. Instead of a keyboard warrior. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit, I can't even, I fucking can't even type, dude. I'm like, <laughs> finger, finger, finger. Or dude, that must have taken you two and a half hours to write that yeah. paragraph. The slow I actually did it on my flip phone. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, man. Yeah. Hey, this is John Cruz. Uh, no, we're not having an earthquake. I have Parkinson's. What What do you think of that, Michael? Uh, some, we ought to pitch in and get you a gimbal. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. But, but seriously, um, this is John Cruz. Uh, and... Uh, I obviously have, have something going on, and I was diagnosed with Parkinson's 20 years ago this year, actually. Um, so uh, I've, I've chosen the Davis Finney Foundation over the years to be my voice for Parkinson's. If you're not familiar with the Davis Finney Foundation, Davis Finney is one of the winningest cyclists in American history. Uh, he's the roadie, if you guys yeah, remember those roadies out there, um, all that lycra and stuff, but uh, he is just a great man. Um, when he was diagnosed with Parkinson's, he decided to make a difference in people's lives. Um, and his, his choice was to start a foundation. And that foundation... Uh, obviously wishes for a cure for Parkinson's because there is no cure at this time. But they recognize that you have to live with Parkinson's and your caregivers are having to live and take care of us. And the Davis Finney Foundation, that's what they do, is they only look for a cure, but they look for uh, ways to enhance the quality of life for Parkinson's sufferers, and their caregivers. So uh, I appreciate all of you supporting the Davis Finney Foundation. Uh, it certainly means a lot to me. Um, I know we all have something, right? So I think it's important to give back to our communities, whether it's BMX or a, a foundation that's close to your heart. If you don't have one, please choose mine. I appreciate you. Well, thank you, John Cruz. You certainly have made a difference in a lot of lives, including mine. And giving us the opportunity to do something good for somebody else is, is fantastic. So thank you. Thank you so much. And on behalf of John Cruz, please 
find a way to give something to the Davis Finney Foundation on behalf of John Cruz, the Dirty Knobs, and your entire BMX family. Thank you very much. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one, you bunch of dirty knobs. So please do that. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Comment if you have anything to say. We'd love to hear it. And uh, we will be back out here in two weeks with another one. And thanks to our sponsors. Speaking of which, we are going to read some commercials to you now. Thanks for uh, showing our sponsors the love because they're showing it to us. Thanks again. And uh, we'll catch up to you soon. And then sing it out right now. All right, coming live and direct from the Colt Clubhouse in Santa Ana, California. Come on down and get all your BMX needs. We're giving away free air for your tires. <laughs> That's all I got, brother. That's great. That's great. All right. Now. It's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> Kenda, designed for your journey on the road, on the trail, or on the racetrack. You can count on Kenda quality. Our tires are engineered for performance and value across a wide range of interests and applications. See why Kenda is the right choice. It's your move. Imagine how bikes can lead to a healthier, more connected world. Bikes set us apart, free to explore and move, and experience our relationships with people and places like nothing else can. At Saris, we don't just imagine a more bikeable world. We're all in, making it happen. As our Sun Tour shares, your passion of cycling. We are committed to giving you the highest level of service in the industry, along with products that hopefully will exceed your expectations. Serving riders is the cornerstone of our business, and we pride ourselves in doing it. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Velocity Bike Park is the premier bike park for riders in Southern California, with 25 miles of world class trails, obstacles, flow track, and races for mountain biking, gravel and BMX. Ultramax. When you get home from the races, do you feel dirty? I mean, is your bike dirty? Really dirty? I know you're dirty. Well, that's when you need the Ultramax sponge, guaranteed to get all your hard to reach places clean. I know, because Hollywood is always dirty. Not available where reading glasses and bobbleheads are sold but you can still get an Ultramax t-shirt at DirtyKnobs.com. Hi everybody, Toby Henderson, founder of Box, co-founder of American BMX Companies, the owner of Race Inc, Botima, and Cook Brothers Racing. We brought these two companies together to bring you the best quality product you can get for a BMX bike. We're all about the rider, so please check out our Level Up and Rider First programs. See you at the track. ODI Grips the world leader in grip technology, home of the lock-on grip system. Check them out over at www.odigrips.com. 4416 Designs commercial, take one. There you go. <laughs> All right, 4416 Designs. We make shirts, but we don't sell them. Uh, we're just giving back to the sport. If you're out at Ukaipa BMX and you need a shirt, Hit me up. I'll hook you up with one. Yeah, I love that. Mega Design Group is a full-service marketing firm. They handle everything from logos to advertising to packaging. Having over 25 years' experience in the print and marketing fields, they can handle any hurdle. Check it out at megadesigngroup.com. Carbone Cartel, for the finest carbon BMX racing products in the market. Make sure you check us out at CarboneCartelBMX.com. Our products are ridden by the best in the sport. Drew Polk, Nick Long, and many, many more. This isn't the cheap shit you get from Ali Bobbitt. Make sure you check us out again at CarboneCartelBMX.com. Cool Stop Brake Pads. High-performance bicycle brake pads since 1977. 
Check them out at coolstop.com. That's K-O-O-L-S-T-O-P.com. Supercross BMX. What can we say? Our lives revolve around BMX. Founded in 1989 to build the ultimate BMX race frame, they've never strayed from that vision. Hey, for more details, check it out at supercrossbmx.com. Hey everyone, this is Brian Wilson with ProGate. We are the official gate supplier for UCI and the Olympics. We even make a gate that you can practice on in your driveway at home. Wait a minute, who else are you making a gate for? We're making a gate for Dirty Fest. You guys got to come and check it out. Whatever Dirty Fest needs for this track, we're going to supply it. We're not some French knockoff, you know. We're the gold standard in BMX gates. And make sure to check us out at progate.net and bmxtracksupply.com, and we'll see you at Dirty Fest for sure. Take care, everybody. Hey, folks, this is Mike Rodriguez, a.k.a. Mr. Crit. I've been racing and making number plates since 1980, you know, like when they used to do one-pedal starts. But, you know, Crip Blade has been around for 43 years. The last four decades, the who's who of BMX have raced a crit number plate straight to the handlebars. And, you know, you get that guy, Mike Savage, the international man of BMX, still doing it strong. And, you know, back in the day, the plates used to be reversible because there was multiple sanctions. And you could put, you know, one sanction on one side, one on the other. Now you just got one. But crit is still reversible. And that logo is still on the back. For guys like Mike and your rad guys, you know, like Mike Miranda, who would turn those handlebars and twist them up. And we got it rad just for you. All right. Hey, where will we see those plates? Those plates you can see at every single bike shop that, that, that stocks BMX stuff in the USA and Canada. And where will you be at? Will you be at an event sometime soon? Damn, I'm sponsoring the Dirty Fest. And I can't wait to come out to Southern California and, and get dirty. Amy Griffiths, still made here in the USA, used by world champions like me, Tommy Brackens. If you want to know more about the best grips on earth, go to amy.com. If you have a Senna cycling helmet, you know what it's like to ride connected. Senna got their start in communications for the motorcycling industry, where they're now a leader. Senna brought their same tech that goes into those helmet-to-helmet -helmet motorcycle communication systems into cycling helmets. Senna bike helmets have an integrated microphone and two speakers hidden right into the shell. Senna helmets connect together on a mesh or Bluetooth network so you can talk to your friends while you ride without shouting over wind noise, even if you're not side by side. That's super cool, especially in the trails. Senna helmets also pair with smartphones so you can listen to your playlist without blocking out ambient noise and you can take phone calls and even hear turn by turn GPS directions. Ready? <laughs> and that's going in. Yeah. <laughs> We need a doing. All right. What's your nickname for, uh, for like from the mic? Do you have a no. no. You don't have. I don't really have a nickname. It's Mike. Oh, just Mike on the mic. Pain in my ass. <laughs> that's, she got one. That's getting edited. Yeah. <laughs> We're putting that in. Hi, I'm Mike Miller, author of Day One by Michael Miller. And a special offer going out. Anybody who buys the book between now and Dirty Fest, which is April 28th through 30th, I'm going to take all the money from the book and send it to the Davis Finney Foundation for those with Parkinson's. So get your copy on Amazon.com and we'll make a donation. Hey, what was the name of that book again? Day One by Mike, Michael Miller, which is me. I'm sorry. Hey, what was that name again? Day One by Michael Miller. Hey, support the podcasts that support us, our friends, uh, the fine folks over there at All Things BMX, which is our favorite Wednesday night live podcast, as you know. Uh, our buddies over there at Beer Budget BMX, uh, Big Bike BMX and bmx weekly check them out check them out our friends what's up everybody it's your friend isaac from big bike bmx and i've got a podcast with my best friend 80s bmx craig 
Yep. And guess what, you guys, if you have enjoyed your time here on the Dirty Knobs podcast, we'd love for you guys to come over and hang out with us at Big Bike BMX, where we've got all your old school legends and BMX from the past and today at Big Bike BMX. Isaac, come check us out. We'd love the opportunity to win you over. And if not, hey, it's just another place to talk about BMX with your grimy friends. It's fun. Hey, Dale Holmes, I want to tell you something. One of my favorite podcasts that I never miss is BMX Weekly. Even though it has an accent, I still love it. <laughs> Cheers, Mike. You can get all the podcasts on bmxweekly.com. Old school, mid school, today's school. Check it out. Yeah, BMX Weekly. <laughs> hey, here we go. Hey, Beer Budget BMX, baby. Coming out you live from the beer budget studios over here at the hack shack quarantine oh man we're coming in hotter than the satan's nutsack yeah we are dirtier than an alabama strip club where reclass pros go and get lap dances by their half sister yeah the only show that'll make you second guess your life choices like an amish on an e-bike hey if you guys enjoy what you just listened to make sure you tune in every wednesday night to the all things bmx show the only live streaming podcast show in the game right now even ask mike he's been on vicente has been on still waiting for that other guy to come on the show you can find us on youtube twitch and facebook and you can also find us at all things bmx show.com keep it dirty <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Leary, I got your trophy ticket. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Charlie Williams, I got your trophy ticket. Whoa! <laughs> okay, nine o'clock, right on the money. Justin, you want in on the game? Am I not there? You're no, you're not in the game yet. JV picks a number. How late EC is going to be? Oh. What do you, and then we go the over under. I think like uh no JV picks the number. Oh, okay. How late's going to be JV? I think he's going to uh it's 01. It's 1101. He's excited. So I think he's he... I think he's coming right on. I think it's going to be for I think uh in 1104. 04. 04. 04 is the number. So 05 yeah. is the is the middle. I'll take the over. I'll I'll take the under, I guess. Oh. <laughs> Just betting against me. Sons of bitches. <laughs> Your sons of bitches is what you are. All right. He's just got date. Eric said he was just through the gate on his way home. Oh, oh my God. He's, he's Talk to me, baby. 904. Eight. He just hit 905. <laughs> Here's the, so if he gets in, we're so now we're right now, you guys are even. But now it's gonna in in about forty five seconds. Justin, you're gonna owe me a dollar, and JV, I'm down to five to you then. Yeah. I feel the tide turning, boys. The tide is turning. 